Great, thanks Pip, um, and thank you Heemstar for giving me just, um, a few minutes to share about the study really. Um, so yeah, I'm Christina Mahimraj at Imperial. This study um, is being led by Deepa Arash Lade, who's a consultant at Imperial. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about it, some of you may know um, a fair bit about it involved already. Um, so it's called A squared PLS, which I think we, we've had problems with the superscript on email, so you may know it as A2 PLS, um, but if, if um, call it what you like, um, either is fine. So just a bit of background that you all know, antiphospholipid syndrome is an acquired autoimmune disease characterized by the presence of thrombosis and or specifically defined pregnancy morbidity with persistently positive antiphospholipid antibodies. We know that anticoagulation for these patients has traditionally been with vitamin K antagonists or warfarin, However, with the emergence of DOACs and their ease of administration, um, monitoring and, and their use in APLS has been uh, investigated in recent years. The two most common trials, well, TRAPS, the TRAPS uh, trial is the RCT um, done in Italy with Pengo, which you probably have all heard of. Um, this was uh, a trial looking at rivaroxaban versus warfarin in thrombotic APS. Um, unfortunately, was stopped early due to an excess of events with rivaroxaban arm due to the percent um, of uh, thrombosis on the rivaroxaban arm versus 3% on warfarin. There was also lots more bleeding in the rivaroxaban arm too. So this uh, study was uh, stopped early. There's been lots of other retrospective studies that have been looked at in a similar area and actually have said much the same thing. You may have seen that in blood advances in March of this year, Astro APS has also said much the same, looking at apixaban versus, versus warfarin. And at 12 months, um, Actually, there'd be six events. I think six out of 23 patients that had stroke in the apixaban arm versus no patients on the warfarin arm having had uh, a stroke. So that study was also terminated early. There was also multiple protocol um, kind of modifications throughout, which you can see here. But both kind of saying the same thing, which is that we shouldn't be using um, maybe using DOAPs in these patients, and that obviously led to the MHRA and EMA putting out warnings uh, against the same, much the same. And we know that the BSH followed that up in 2019, I believe, with the addendum to the APS guidelines, um, warning us against using vitamin, uh, using DOACs in certainly arterial thrombosis, certainly triple positive disease, and potentially also non triple positive APS, so we have less data in this arena. So what we aimed of our study, well, we wanted to look at the and practice um, in, in the UK and um, we also want to examine this practice in the context of APL antibody status. So why these patients triple positive, dual positive, single positive, and looking at their single positivity as well. We also want to look at the use of DOAX in non-triple positive APS. We know that we don't um, know much in this uh, area that's said. We also want to look at the use of hydroxychloroquine in this group. As you may know, we have been interested in the kind of possibly anti-thrombotic and Im immunomodulatory effects of hydroxychloroquine. And you know, the practice is actually quite varied through the country with this. So I think this is a kind of an added um, thing that we're a bit interested in. So there will be questions of that of that nature. So this is a national multi-centre retrospective study. Data collection, we're happy for it to go back as far as feasibly possible. We've said 10 years maximum, but that's probably a bit um, <laughs> a bit too, um, too far back. But inclusion criteria, any patient over 18 years old with thrombotic APS, exclusion criteria, anyone less than 18, or anyone that has obstetric uh, APS in isolation or has no history of thrombosis. Um, we're using the REDCap database, which I'm sure you've all um, used before, a secure web platform. The types of data we're collecting, looking at antibody status, anticoagulation history, thrombotic history, drug history, any potential obstetric history as well. It's fairly simple form, it's all fairly tick box, there shouldn't be much free text for uh, people to put in, and everybody will be given cyclical collaborator status. We've been running this since about December, I think last year, so I appreciate with COVID it's been quite difficult to get people involved. We have about 15 centres involved at the moment. We're aiming for about 500 patients. Um, we have about 300, I'd say, at the moment, so almost there. Um, I think Rich sent an email out to say the deadline would be the 11th of April. I think we probably can extend that a little bit better. There's been a few more people that contacted me. We hope you're interested. I hope for anyone that's not yet joined us, please join us. And yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.